ladies. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Chloe and I just rushed here from Shoreditch, which is where my office is. And um, I just thought because I hadn't done uh, Monday Musings that we should uh, not get behind ourselves. So this is called Free Fall Tuesday. And it's really interesting because, sorry, I've lost my voice. At the weekend, I did some amateur dramatics, which some of you might have caught on Instagram. And I really have lost my voice, so I won't be speaking for long. Um, but anyway, I just thought, would it be nice to do it at 6.30? It means my Australian ladies are asleep, but it means other ladies might have got home and be um, just chilling out uh, before they have to go and make supper or whatever. So I just thought, different audience, why not? Anyway, you've all sent me some questions, and I want you all to keep sending me questions, and I'm going to answer you answer as many questions as I can, but I'm first of all going to take off my coat. So Chloe is here, here, say hello. <laughs> Let me just start with my outfit of the day, and it's my Zara blush coat. Let me just, let me just take that down so you can see better. So it's my Zara blush coat, which um, is from the Zara collection uh, that's kind of slightly more expensive, but it's an incredible quality coat. It's got a wonderful raglan sleeve, very nice lining. I like particularly that it has this belt, which you can either do um, just inside here, so the front is fastened, or, and the back is not, or you could swap it the other way around and just have it doing up at the back. But I love that versatility. And I also am wearing it with my Kos shiny uh, top. Do you remember I had this when I said, if it's too cold and today I woke up glorious sunshine, I went to the office and I was thinking, mm, it's a bit chilly, so I put this on top, bit of layering. The shirt also is a little bit see-through, so I thought, kill two birds with one stone. Anyway, in the bathroom now, I'm gonna start with, um, hello ladies, hello Holly, hello Alison, hello Alex, nice for you to join, and your sister, and Miriam, um, I have to wear my glasses a little bit, and Sherman, hello. Chloe, first question, because we ask people okay. early to do questions, and then I'm gonna do a bit of spring, summer makeup, and just chat, okay? So, any questions, yes? Mm -hmm. How can you update your makeup for spring? It's very tricky. Do because you, do you update it at all? Well, that's the thing. I I think we go through different phases in makeup. So I think probably when I was 17, I was in my orange fake tan and I had uh, Miss Selfridge rather disgusting pink lipstick really squidged together. My fake tan was terrible. And then I did that look uh, with some blue eyeshadow probably for about seven years. And I woke up at 25 and I thought, what am I doing? And then I changed my makeup a bit. And I think every five years, we need to look at our makeup and think, does this suit my face? And if you happen to want to do a lip that's in season, let me just show you. I've got a new lip here I'm gonna try. Then you can think, I'll do that lip, but how should I do that lip differently? So, let me give an example of doing that lip differently. I've got it here. Yes, I've got it here. Lip products, I like that. Um, I love a strong lip, but I've noticed the lines above my mouth a little bit more noticeable. So when I do a strong lip now, I really focus on a good lip primer, of which I have quite a few. So I might take, I'm gonna take today, actually, NYX, and I put that above my lip and this is something I wouldn't have done 10 years ago because I didn't need to. Uh, but I still think, can I wear the red lip, the strong red lip? And I can, but now I might think, let's make my eyes clean and not put eyeshadow on the top because I believe the older you get, less is more. So I'm going to take now, I'm going to digress to every single one of your questions, this NARS colour, which is quite a dark colour. And I think with this, with this rose gold, it worked quite well. I'm going to really, it's on haphazardly. Do you think it's okay to wear red lipstick in the morning? Yes! I think. You've got to wear a red lip when a le wed, wed lip wants to wear you. And when you're thinking to yourself, you know, I put this on now. I put it on so badly, hold on. And this is a, this is a really strong lip. But I'm wearing... 
colour's quite difficult here, but let me get it so that I'm not, I'm very whited out on the screen for some reason. Let me go back. Can you see the rose gold of this? A strong lip works quite well. I look older if I wear a strong lip with black than I do. Let me show you. Actually, let me get a bit of black and put it around me. Okay, this is me in a strong lip, how I'd wear it now. And how I'd wear a strong lip a few years ago would have been with black, and that's quite hard on my face. Um, my camera's really whiting out, but that's hard on face. So there's different ways you wear makeup at different ages. I think there's various rules, like can you still wear a strong lip when you're in your 40s and 50s? I think you can, but I think the preparation of application before is very important. So products I think are great to help that are NYX has a lip primer which has some wax in it i also this is my little sort of section of things i love another good lip product is skin suticals can i just put that there so you can see it it's really irritating that my camera's on this again okay can you go in there yes can you see that chloe put our hand behind it so we can no then it makes it whiter mm, okay now we can see it yeah there okay that's good that's good and now you can see my face because i'm holding it there but this Skin to for it's very good for medium term dealing with the lip line. And then Sensei have a lip treatment, which I really like, which is more sort of moisturizing and hydrating. So I look after my lips. I scrub them a lot too. Um, so I'm gonna scrub and show you the scrub as I answer the next question. Yeah, yes. Meanwhile, what is the biggest mistake a woman after 50 can do with the makeup and clothes? Like what do you recommend not to do? Oh. I always feel we should break rules. I just think, you know, there's there's one woman actually who asked earlier today, can I wear shorts in my 50s? Doing your gardening, you've got great knees, wear them out. It depends how confident you feel about your body. And there's many, many women that I meet and I see them and they might say, if only I had known in my 30s not to put my legs away. That is something you have to consider celebrate what you've got ladies don't feel you've got to hide it away all right and um and i think that you know it's finding the style that we feel comfortable in so for me my everyday look i i don't wear a dress i've never really liked dress because i've never been in love with my legs susanna who i uh, worked with for many years had the most incredible legs she knew her asset so if you know your asset and you know what really you feel confident about keep showing it off for god's sakes don't hide it don't you know rules are there to be broken do what makes you feel really good when you get up in the morning and you know i put on a loud shirt if i feel sometimes i'm in a quiet mood and i need that shirt to speak for me um so there's no rules in my book apart from basic simple things of choosing the right shade of color that suits you and um if you have long body and short legs, elongating your legs with some little tricks. So those tricks that I share with you occasionally, I think are very appropriate to do. But um, I think it's mo what's most important for all of us is to not get in a rut and to challenge ourselves and think, Sh is it time to refresh my makeup? Is it time to go in my wardrobe and think, actually, let me take everything out and just put back the things I really love. Let's get rid of the things that don't fit me anymore. Let's find some little holes I need to fill up and let me have a little shopping list. Let me sell some stuff if I don't have the cash for that shopping list so that I can just walk in my wardrobe and want to wear 80% of it. Yeah. Those are important things. Louise is 53 and she does what she feels comfortable with. Good on you. Go, Louisa. Go, <laughs> Louisa. Louise is asking what shampoo do you use because your hair is so glossy. Okay, I know. it's Right now it is quite glossy. I use, I use expensive shampoo. Um... I remember somebody telling me once that you should change your shampoo a lot and that really helps your hair. And um, I found that if I use very, um, it's not necessarily inexpensive, but if I just use like a, you know, hotel room shampoo, my hair will be like a piece of straw. So I've got out here a shampoo drawer I've never shown you. Let me just get my hair things. I've got them all here. Okay, all right, ladies, let's talk hair. Let's talk hair. My voice is gonna go in three seconds, but let's talk hair. And let me show you some things to do with hair. So, what do I love in here? 
I love this. This is such a brilliant product. This is, these are my hair favorites. So weird how we got on hair favorites. Col uh, Color Wow, the thing I use, which I've got in at the moment to cover the gray, which I really love. It's probably, that's probably, somebody said, what can I not go on a desert island without? It would be something to stop the gray coming through. So we all know this product, but I'm just gonna say, you know, you just get where there's some gray. I, I do this so much, but actually, get where there's some gray. There's some gray and you just cover, you just cover it. Five shades, brilliant product. That's top of my list. But the same company, Color Wow, made this. So when you don't have time to do a kind of whole blow dry thing, and my blow dry does take 45 minutes, I, and my hair's looking a bit yuck and flat. I put a bit of this in, dry hair, and then I just take the hairdryer and I just um, kind of use a round bristle hairdryer, uh, a brush with a hairdryer, and it gives me immediately volume and it looks like I've just done my hair again. So that is such a good refresher product when you don't have much time to use with your hairdryer. Couldn't recommend it enough, love it. Okay, oh, yes. Now, yes. Jane's uh, husband left her on the 3rd of January, everyday scenes, she's worn a dark red lip bead. Makes her feel stronger, but she wears it always with good black, so what would you recommend instead? She just wears some muted eyeliner and mascara. Okay. She has glasses. Okay, Jane, I'm going to make a, a random suggestion to you. You wear black, I don't know your size, your colouring, or whatever, but try wearing it with white, because I think Red and black definitely is a statement. It's like, don't effing mess with me. But white has something beautiful about it as a color. And I think everyone can wear a shade of, of the palest color. Um, so whether you suit cream or, or ecru or white, but try white with it. Um, and try white on white, which is just glorious. It's, it's one of my favorite things. It gets very dirty, but I, but I really love it. So just go the opposite end of the scale. Deborah, silver shampoo for grey hair, lovely lift, wouldn't change my silver for anything. Go girl. I, I unfortunately haven't got to a stage yet of being able to grow out my grey. Um, I'm just going to keep going with my product now. Ha! Huh. I use also Philip Kingsley for quite a few years and he has a product called Elasticizer. And what it is, is it's a, this is not actually it, this is his moisture um, conditioning extreme. But you put it on before you wash your hair and it kind of really soaks in. So sometimes when my hair's be very dry or if I've been in the sun in the summer, I will take the Philip Kingsley Elasticizer, put it in my hair at night, sleep in it, and then, um, and then uh, wash it out the next day. And it's very good. Can I just say, I've got a friend of mine who's on a boat around the world saying hello. Alice Minna, we love Trini. Amanda, I hope you're having the best time on your boat. She's gone on a world cruise for two months. She I love that. Ballsy woman. Also, she's just wearing the, the same dresses. Exactly, so true. Okay, another old favorite, which I rediscovered in Selfridges last week. Leonora Gray is, um, I found this label 25 years ago in Paris, and it had an incredible smell because some of her products smelled of orchid. I think it's orchid, but it's the most exquisite smell. And she has some styling products. And she has a product you put in your hair when it's a bit dry and you put it in the ends and it doesn't weigh it down. But that's also one of my favorite hair products. Mm, loving this hair moment. Um, is anyone else still interested as I, as I go on? Okay, ladies, I'm gonna get the water. I'm gonna finish off with my last favorite product from here. There's too many here. Um, yes, do you know Schwarzkopf do an oil shampoo and I love it. They have a shampoo and conditioner and it's really great. So I'm going to put that up there. Then I'm going to take those away because I need to use my sink. What was the question? Give me a question, so, Chloe. Yeah, but well, just to finish up Claire, use this Moroccan oil dry shampoo. Yeah. She just says. Great. What's your hair texture so we can know if it works for us? <laughs> okay, we need to know. So when all of you, when you say that's a great product, tell us what you're like so we can think because this community will grow if we all begin to know what we all look like. Because then, who's the lady who said about the Moroccan hair oil? Uh, she's called Claire. Claire. So Claire, tell us, do you have dry hair and 
X, Y, and Z. And, and I think that gives good identification, the more personal we can get. Um, okay. Oh, shower gel. There was a question from earlier as well. Shower what shower gel do you All right, this is really getting down and dirty. I don't know if you remember, I talk about this um, very old Italian label called Santa Maria Novella, which is this pharmacy in Florence. And they have lots of, um, oh, you're all doing love hearts, do you know? I love it so much. And they have their kind of signature scent is, do I say Melegrano? Melegrano, yes. How do I say it? Melegrano. From Chloe, from the horse one. Melegrano. Anyway, it's a pomegranate and they have shampoos and they have soaps and everything. And then I use this, which is their bath shower gel. Look, there it is. It's the most divine range ever. It's got um, ingredients that have not been anywhere near chemicals, I choose to believe, because it's it's so delicious. I mean, I, I've got one or two other things, like the other thing I love so much of theirs. Let me see if I've got it here. Oh, I have another one. Oh, yes, I do. Hold on. Hold on. Ah, I can't even open it. So they have this cream, which I think I've told you about. Crema F. Love this cream. It's kind of cream, you know. A lot of you ask me, can you put things over foundation? I always find in the middle of the day, when my skin is tired, I don't use a huge amount of foundation. I use tinted moisturizer. But the way I refresh it best is I will then put a mo uh, moisturizer on top and just work it all in again. You know, wake that skin up. And I think it gives a fresher look instead of piling on, piling on concealer foundation, you know, if we don't have time to take everything off. I prefer to put moisturizer in, wake up the skin and then put a little bit more on. So lucky, God, get me something, please, please. Okay, next question. Okay, so. For stylish summer, capsule wardrobes and dressing on holiday. She always ends up with the same things, and she can always wear in 30 degrees. And okay. Colors never work. Who is it? What's her name? Her name is uh, Nicola. Nicola. Nicola, if you're still watching, as I put on, I'm going to put on my bourgeois concealer because I'm feeling I need concealer. Very nice concealer. Um, I would say that doing a capsule wardrobe is something I want to spend a whole post on. So I will actually um, think about what that should entail. Uh, I usually, when I go on holiday, I have a kind of set. This is for holiday for her, right? Yes. Yeah, and I always have a... Okay, this is one trick I do. When I go on my holiday, like last summer, I went on my holiday, I took too much, I came back, and I separated what I'd worn and what I hadn't worn. And what I hadn't worn then went into a box because I think I might get rid of it. Um, because there's a certain wardrobe I have in the summer, which I've had for years and years and years because I think I change my summer clothes that are holiday clothes less than any other clothing. Because if we have friends, it's the kind of thing, if the suitcase was stolen, I would be mortified. But I tend to keep a very similar palette. So I kind of wear white, 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 navy and an occasional pattern and then I'll take with me two or three um, fabric belts which change my dresses a few mad necklaces and changes of shoes and I think I could live on four dresses over two weeks doing that but I will do one Facebook in the next month actually I'm going to do it the beginning of June um, which will be go away for a long weekend going away for a week and I'll show you what I do I hope that helps. Next one. Yes, staying on topic, Amanda was asking if you can recommend a grab bag of essentials, like multitasking skincare and makeup that doesn't... Oh, I, I, you know what, I'd like to do it now, but it's tricky because this... You saw my cupboards before. Some lady said to me, you have way too much makeup, you don't need all that makeup. And I think you have to remember I'm always trying things and I bought a lot to try um, and I don't really get sent things that much, but I accumulate, I do accumulate. And in that accumulation, if I had to say, what would be the kind of two things, if I could only go away with three things, so tricky, so tricky. But one of them, weirdly, might be the Rodin um, exfoliating cleanser because you can change its consistency. I've shown this before on my post, but you can have it with a little bit of water or you can have it 
with a lot of water and I'm just going to show you here how it works and you make a scrub on your hand I'm so sorry my light's gone on my thing um like that no you can't see and you make it into a paste or a mask you can add oil to it but it cleans your face and it's hydrating and I I'm if I'm only going to take two things with me I would want something which is a cleanser that would not dry my skin out and was an oil that I could wear in different ways so I might then I might just do this I might take her oil she has a face oil but you can use it on your hair everywhere so if I took those two things <gasps> could I do those two things um, and survive probably could Probably could. Not that I'd want to, because I'd want to have my miniature version of all my Juliander products. But I could. I could. Okay. Vitamin Next. Vitamin C from the ordinary, daily or weekly? What? Vitamin C from the ordinary, daily or weekly? Vitamin C from the ordinary, I think, is, um, I, God, if I'm not mistaken, it's 15% ascorbic acid and 2% another acid. So, if you've never used vitamin C before, I would start it every three days in the morning and put it on after you've cleansed your skin and build up. I use vitamin C every morning and I use SkinCeuticals or a sea bag or Julia Hunter and they're all quite strong, but my skin has got used to them. But I think if you can get to daily, that's where you need to head. Yep, next. Claire has double the makeup she used to see what she used. Oh Claire, I'm sorry. I'm sorry because I, I'd like us to be able to curl our makeup like you know could I do some culling now of my makeup I mean I did a curl before but there are things we dip back into I think if there's one thing I would cull funnily enough it might be doing um doing shadows as powders uh, you know powder for the eyes because I was noticing the other day and thinking it can be quite aging so so I might I might curl these. I might curl these. They're nice, but I might curl these. So I'm going to curl them, actually. I'm going to curl them now, and I'm going to say, anybody, anybody here, why not? Two Rosie Huntington Whiteleys. I did like them. I did a comparison with Charlotte Tilbury not that long ago, and um, they really, they were very good. One palette is, um, I can't read it, Chloe, Coppery Gold Rush. Gold Rush. And the other palette is, hold on, hold on. The other palette is Deco Diamonds, okay? Both of you. The coppery one, I think, is good for blue eyes and green eyes, there. And the other one is the um, one, I don't know what color eyes that's good for. I'm not sure, there, which is a diamonds one. Okay, ladies. Any eyebrow recommendations? You know I have many eyebrow recommendations. I'll give you my top three brows. Brow gels. Mac, I quite like Max actually. I don't know what that's doing in there. Ah, oh, Bobby Brown is probably my favorite brow gel. It's very easy to use and it goes on well, like that. Also, actually, let me show you now. I'm gonna end on this. What is exactly in my makeup bag? Oh my gosh, it's here. Yeah. Okay, yes, I've got it here. Yeah. No, I haven't got it here. That's such a bore. I thought I did. I thought I did. Charlotte Tilbury's new brow, I really like. It's a very, very narrow um, brow brush and it goes on well and the colours are great. So I love that. I that, love that one. Um, and then I had one here I did like that I was showing you before. Nope, that's it. Okay, I'm going to give you those two. Next. Next. Um, Next. So let me read the name again but she's 46 she was uh, looking for a night cream 46 looking for a night cream do i know anything about you mm, hmm? not yet not yet okay difficult you could be a 46 year old who only cleanses your cleanses your face and doesn't do a serum or other things so i kind of need to know the context of your um <clears throat> skincare regime right now in order to know that but if i had to do a general night cream I'd say don't do night cream. <laughs> Sorry, I'd do a serum or I'd do a weird treatment at night. 
but I think oddly your skin's got to breathe or have something on it that's not going to kind of um, really slather it. So I like a vitamin A serum at night, um, followed perhaps by a light sprinkling of some emu oil uh, to give you some moisture, but there's something underneath which is working for you overnight when your skin has most chance to actually regenerate. Um, and I think the traditional thing of putting on a sort of Vichy night cream is beyond me. I, I wouldn't do that, that kind of um, routine. Okay. Okay, we have a few of them asking to talk about Botox, a few of them asking about young skin. Okay, let's talk Botox. We're here to talk about everything. I've had Botox since I was 35. I have it um, with Dr. Seabag. I've had it here. When he does it, he does sort of here, here, and then he does there, around my eye, just about there. And then he does... A little bit here, because I otherwise I'm going to get marionette mouth. So it's not to make my mouth go hello, but it just, by doing it here, it stops my mouth dropping. And then probably once a year, I'll go like this to him. And he'll do my neck, but he, you've got to be quite experienced. Somebody, sorry, I'm looking the other, wrong way, to do the neck. So I believe in it for me. Some people then say, oh my God, your face doesn't move. But um, I do have a very expressive demeanor and if I didn't have Botox, my God, you'd just see my whole face talking, let alone my mouth. So, um, but it's a personal choice. I think it stopped lines appearing on my forehead, um, but you know, would I stop doing it? Would I suddenly wake up one day and stop doing it? I don't know. I do it for now and I've done it since I was 35. Okay, um, yes, next one. And then uh, she's 26, she wants a cream for her routine. Right. What do you suggest as a brand? Uh, 26 cream for your routine. Don't know your, I don't know your budget. I don't know anything about you. It's tricky. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the best eye cream for wrinkles, crowd, crowd oh, oh, okay. Oh, yes. I am trying. I have my favorite eye cream of all time, which is, uh, which is um, Opti Crystal by Cosmetics. And it's a chiral uh, cream, which means it sort of matches you. It's got a little bit, I don't know if I have any here, but it is, everyone, by now, you kind of think, I always talk about this bloody cream. Um, this is it. I love this one a lot, because I think it has uh, short and medium term properties. I'm also, I love the one that's my concealer and my um, uh, eye cream in one, which is the Cure by Nacho Bisset. Prohibitively expensive, but so worth it. I mean, really worth it. I've had it a year now. And then, oddly, for that moment of thinking your skin feels a bit crepey and dehydrated, Charlotte Tilbury has brought out an eye cream and I wasn't prepared to like it because I just sort of felt, um, oh, I don't even know if I want to have a proper traditional eye cream. But actually, the consistency is really nice. The smell is typically her smell like her magic cream. And, um, and I put it on and I feel... There's a tiny bit of light reflection in it. I haven't checked the ingredients fully yet, but I quite like it. I surprisingly quite like it because I always feel I should go for a cosmeceutical brand to give me an eye cream finish. I'm trying, I've just ordered The Ordinaries um, have an eye cream, which is for dark circles under the eyes and it's got caffeine in it. I don't know if any of you have tried that yet, but I just got it yesterday morning and I'm gonna start trying it for a week and I'll tell you what I think. Okay, next, and then okay. I'm off. What time yeah. is it? Um, 6.55. Oh, so best mascara that doesn't smudge and for uh, glasses as well? Best mascara that doesn't smudge. Oh, can I just say, let's try one now. Sorry, I've got one here. I want to try for ages. Ages and ages and ages. Where is it? Oh, I've got my back. I just ordered my, I just ordered my case. And then they're asking about clothes and trainers and stuff. I don't know if you want to Clothes and trainers. Maybe five. Okay, can I just say, Chloe and I on Friday are going to do, and I promise you this, I'm sorry it took so long, I got a bit behind. I'm going to do trousers and what length trouser we should be wearing this season. If you wear a crop wide leg trouser, should you be wearing a heel or a brogue or a trainer? If you're wearing a trainer, what socks do you wear? Do you let the sock show the end of it before you see the trouser leg? All these minute details, which are quite important. Like today, let me just show you. This is such a silly thing. Um, I was going to do an Instagram. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. I need something to show you. Um, and I was going to do an Instagram today, and I didn't do it because I'm the right sock on, but I'm wearing this trouser like that. And I had decided that it was too cold for me to do 
bare legs like that, okay? And it looks a bit weird because it's quite dark, the trouser, but I didn't want to do a black sock. So I got from Tabio, which is this great sock shop from um, Asia, these sparkly ones. Ha! Huh, sparkled socks. You'd think I was a 12 year old. And um, I put those on and then my shoe, my brogue, took on a new life. Let me show you actually. Here, do you see? So it kind of now... Emma says okay. a crazy pop sock is the way forward. I mean, look at that. I, I like that. I like that look of just having the... Um, can you see this, Clary? Because I'm not looking where the camera's going. Of just having the silver shoe and then a bit of silver in my sock and then the trouser, which is cropped. Um, so those are the kind of things we're going to be talking about when we do it. And Chloe and I will make it for sure this week, won't we, Chloe? Yes. How to wear trousers different lengths. Um, I know, I got some. They're so good. And they're a bit longer than these because these have this thing of, you know, when you have that bit in between, not a good look. Um, I'm going to end with a mascara. La Roche-Posay. I spent so long trying to find it and I found it in my local French pharmacy. And there are many mascaras where people say, I don't want it to smudge. But I think that we all have differently behaved eyelashes and, um, and cheekbones. So some of us, when we smile, our skin goes very close to our eye and we're going to get smudged, whatever. But I'm at the end of my lashes. So I'm, for the first time in ages, putting on mascara. But I just want to see, this is such an allergy-free mascara. And somebody, I think Alex Steiner said it was incredibly good. Caroline says, yeah, yay, La Roche. <laughs> and I like it. I like it. That's very nice. That is very nice, actually. It's great. Karen says, try Chantecaille for slash. Oh, I know, but it's very, very expensive, that Chantecaille one. I think it's like 30 something pounds. Um, and I think I'm going to show you. This is how many mascaras I've got, ladies. Could you add mascara if you're wearing extensions? Well, you know, this. I think this is the Chantecaille one you mean which is very nice, we'll do that on the other one. Um, you shouldn't really, I'm just about over them. So I have put it on just to show you because it, it's rare that I will. This is the Chantecai mascara, which I also love. It's very, very nice. I'm just gonna do my lower lashes. But it's really easy to apply, it's not clumpy. It, it's a great mascara, that. So that one, the La Roche-Posay, I'm loving. There's tons more in here. A lot of people like Ico, but I'm just trying that. So I'm actually waiting for these lashes to come off so that um, I can do my Secret 7 mascara, which I think, Chloe, we're going to do in the next two yes. weeks. And then I'll be lashing on my lashings and mascara. Anyway, I feel I'm blurring now and I'm blur. So I'm going to stop. And funny enough, my sore throat is gone and I can speak to you. But have a lovely evening, ladies. And um, I will... What are we doing this week that we want to... Oh, yes, we're going to go on Friday shopping in Zara until we get thrown out. And then, and then we're going to go to French Connection um, and have a look there because I found some really great stuff in French Connection. And any of you who want to have natural, beautiful fabrics, their cotton this season is fabulous. And I've got some very pretty tops from French Connection, which, um, which I'm going to uh, take you through. And then I might, I'm going to probably do Oxford Street, so I might pop along. If I do French Connection on one side, Zara the next, and if we get thrown out, I might slip into Mango. So, join me Friday, shop up heaven. I'm probably, Chloe, we're going to go out when, about lunchtime, 11, 12. Yeah. We kind of have to get the crowd so the security guards don't see us. And then we have our bag woman who's behind Chloe, who kind of covers Chloe filming, and then we just wait till it's run out. But anyway, ladies, have a lovely evening. Mwah, mwah, mwah.